Okay, let's move on. I promised that I'm gonna give you the Unigram model, which is a different version of coming up with soft words. And let's do that. And the idea is using Unigram language model to do the soft word segmentation process. So Unigram language model is gonna give us a new soft word segmentation algorithm. It's gonna be based on a Unigram language model and hence the name. And it's gonna be capable of outputting multiple soft word segmentations with their corresponding probabilities. So you are not gonna know or appreciate why would you output multiple soft word segmentations? Don't you want it to be unique? In the end, once you tokenize, don't you want it to be unique? And you're gonna appreciate it by the end of this slide. Why you really want that? Why is it a useful thing? Now, what do I mean by multiple soft word segmentations? You have the same human readable sentence, but then you can segment it multiple different ways. You can have hell, all, world, age, hello, world, or many other combinations. And all of these are valid translations when it comes to translating from human readable sentences to computer readable sequences. And you're gonna appreciate why this is useful later on. But for now, just bear with me. How does the tokenization work? Unlike byte pair encoding, that you start with a small vocabulary and then enlarge it to the size that you like, this is gonna start in the reverse order. It's gonna start with a very large vocabulary from your training corpus, which you can just obtain by looking at the spaces and then generating your vocabulary that way. And it's gonna give you a very large vocabulary to begin with. Now you're gonna, you start with something large, you need to shrink it. So it's going the other way around compared to byte pair encoding. So you're gonna repeat the following steps until the size of your vocabulary reaches the size that you set, the desired size. Once you choose a vocabulary, you're gonna fix it, and then you're gonna optimize the probability. This one is gonna be clear very soon. You're gonna optimize some probability over your sentences. And this is actually where your language model is gonna come in. Because in the end, a language model is gonna put a probability distribution on the sentences that can happen in a language. Then how do you actually remove subwords from your uh, vocabulary? You look at the subword, you're gonna compute how much are you gonna lose in terms of some likelihood if you remove that word. And that's gonna give you a measure of how important that subword is. And now you're gonna associate a loss to every single subword in your vocabulary. You're gonna sort these symbols or these subwords according to the loss, which is a scalar. And then you're gonna keep the 80% of them, the top 80%, or equivalently, you're removing the 20%. So you're removing the 20 least important subwords. And then you might say, if you do that, you might run into the trouble that you are not gonna be able to model out of word, out of dictionary words, and you're correct. To fix that, you're gonna include every single character in your vocabulary. And this way, if there is a word that is really nasty and it doesn't uh, decompose using your dictionary, you're just gonna use its subwords, its uh, single characters. So every single character is gonna give you your word. So that's in the worst case scenario. But I owe you a lot of details. What is this P? What is this L? Let's do that. You will start with the vocabulary. You are gonna write a likelihood. You are gonna look at the sentences in your corpus. So D is your corpus. X, S is a sentence in that corpus. And then you are summing over all of the sentences, the log of your likelihoods. So this is basically log likelihood. Okay, so far so good. This summation we are gonna keep, this log we are gonna keep, this probability, we don't like working with raw sentences. We don't like working with hello world. We like working with integers. So you're gonna take that sentence and tokenize it using this vocabulary that, it, that you started with. And you could end up with multiple uh, detokenized versions of the same input sentence. So the same sentence could give you multiple X's. And the probability of that is just the addition of all of those possibilities. D is the size of your corpus or absolute value of D. S of uh, XS 
in terms of notation is the set of all segmentation candidates. And this is basically all of these segmentation candidates that could happen for the same sentence. You could have multiple segmentation candidates. Your X in the end of the day is a sequence of integers, like what you have here. It's a sequence of integers. It's a sequence of three integers here or a sequence of more integers here. That's your subword sequence. You're gonna write a unigram language model. And what is a unigram language model? The probability of the entire sequence is just the multiplication of every single word or every single subword in that sequence. You are treating a sentence as a bunch of independent subwords. And that's why it's called unigram, because you're looking at your uh, one grams, which are your subwords. That's where this unigram language model is coming in. And this, we can interpret this as the subword occurrence probabilities. What is the probability that this subword is going to show up in this sentence? And they need to add up to one over your vocabulary to give you a probability distribution. Okay, so far so good. The question is how do you actually estimate P? Because you need to have an estimate for it. And as soon as you have an estimate for every single word or subword in your vocabulary, you know the corresponding probability of your sentences, and therefore you can write down your likelihood. And from the likelihood, you can say, if I remove this subword, how much information am I going to lose? Or how much likelihood am I going to lose? How do you estimate that? you're gonna estimate it using an expectation maximization problem. And in the end of the day, you are maximizing this likelihood. That's where the maximization process is coming in. For expectation, you are creating estimates for your piece. And the expectation maximization process is gonna follow one maximization step, uh, and then it's gonna do the expectation, maximizations expectation. And that's how you're gonna find the maximum of your likelihood. But the details does, don't really matter here. All you need to do, know is that you're maximizing this. And what are you actually maximizing with respect to? You're maximizing with respect to these P's. And the reason you need this expectation maximization process is because of this summation being inside the log. If you had the summation of logs, or if this summation was just a product, then you could just maximize that with respect to these parameters right away. But now, because of this summation being inside the log, you're going to do the expectation process, which is basically computing this summation. That's why it's expectation maximization. But in the end of the day, you are optimizing over estimates of these probabilities. Once you know that, then you can just follow this procedure. Start with a very large vocabulary and then shrink it. Now is the time that I, I told you that this algorithm is going to output multiple subword segmentations. And why do you want that? Because you can use it as a regularization process, subword regularization. You still have your translation system. This part of the probability is just a chain rule, and that one we know. And you can model it using attention mechanism or recurrent neural networks or CNNs. That part is straightforward. There is this part that for every pair of sentence, input output, you can have multiple samples from your uh, segmentation process. And then it's gonna sort of give you an ensemble of models or ensemble of possibilities. And that way you're gonna be able to write down a better language model or translation system, sorry. In terms of comparison to the state of the art, these are word models, character-based models. These are the corresponding blue scores. If you use a mixture of words and characters, or you use byte pair encoding, if you use Unigram without subword regularization, without sampling multiple samples, sample only one of them, or using uh, multiple samples. And how do you actually do it? This probability for sampling, given a human readable sentence, what is the corresponding sequence of integers? You can model it using your Unigram language model with some hyperparameter alpha that you choose. And you want this to actually turn into a probability. Therefore, you're going to divide by a summation over all of these possibilities. Maybe you're interested in 64 possibilities. And these are the L best segmentations. 
I think uh, it's a good time for me to stop. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around. And for those of you who want to leave, we can.